Priscilla. That's right, folks. We're finally talking Priscilla, the latest film from Sofia Coppola, a director I really like. I just did a huge rewatch of all of her movies, and I'm just impressed with what she does. I like her. And this is like something that's kind of in tone to some of my more like favorite pieces of hers. Like this is a young woman put in a situation that maybe she shouldn't be in. And now she has to kind of like be an icon and represent something greater than herself. And that's a weird thing to do for a child. But hey, that's life, isn't it, baby? This is the story of Priscilla Presley, the lover and mother of Elvis's child. And this is a Sofia Coppola flick, so it's going to be pretty interesting to see what comes of that. This was at the top of my list for the year. One I was really excited for because I didn't know what to expect. We're coming off of like a renaissance, I say loosely in terms of the popular consciousness of Elvis Presley, where, you know, Austin Butler transformed his life to become that guy for a movie that I was not a big fan of. I liked some of it. I think the message of that movie was more like the self-sabotage he felt towards us, the fans. We drove him to this, and I don't care for that image. I think he's a man that was aware of a lot what he was doing up and towards the end of his career. And that is apparent because a lot of this movie focuses more on the beginnings of his career. It actually starts where Priscilla meets him, because this is her story, and that is when they are at an army base, when he is literally in the military, and she's with her father, who is a general, and they just interact and meet. When she is 14 years old, we should get that out of the way, this movie knows what it's doing. It is playing to a very specific feeling, and that is capturing the fear and terror of the experience of being a teenage girl surrounded by older men that are grooming you. That is what this is doing. I think Sofia Coppola is a very good choice for that, being somebody who has a father who is a figurehead in the film industry. She probably has history being in rooms like this where nobody is really taking you seriously. You're more just like an accessory to the grandiose personality that is your relationship with the person in the room. And she might understand that just from a level of like that with her father, just her role in the film industry and just being a woman. I'm sure that is going to be something a lot of women feel. I'm coming from this as a man, of course, a man who is not a fan of Elvis Presley. I am from that generation that we do not worship at the altar that is, you know, the king of rock and roll. That is my generation. We don't even make jokes about him in like, you know, television episodes anymore. He's not our guy. You know who is our person? Priscilla Presley, because if we're looking at those two characters, I say characters, they're real people. If we look at those two people. What story is going to stand the test of time more with the current like Zillennial, Gen Alpha, Gen Z generations? The story of like a coked up white boy who got super rich just for shaking his hips or a young girl who was groomed by this famous rock star to become this object for him to desire without having her own agency in her own life. Which one of those seems more in line of today's youth? It's Priscilla, obviously, and that is always something Sofia Coppola is really great at capturing, is just young youth and actors in her stories where these people are young, they're doing young things. And when those moments come through in this movie are where I'm like, yeah, I'm really vibing with this. There's so much to like here. Sophia does this great thing she does in a lot of her movies where it's like, we're young, we don't care. We're just like coasting through life, getting by on these vibes and having a good time. We're running through the grounds somewhere, just lying on the grass, enjoying these moments of our youthful bliss. And when this movie takes those moments... I do appreciate that, and it's really nice to see that, because you kind of need that with the other tragedies going on around Priscilla, where her life starts to have any agency, and when you see the moments of her, like, genuinely being happy, it's really pleasant, and it makes you go, yes, that's what I want to see, this isn't just all a broken time for her, she's trying to make herself happy. 
But in a very Sofia Coppola fashion, too, we spend a lot of time in the darkness and the sorrow and, and the bleakness, and that might be upsetting for a lot of people. The audience I saw this with had some older audience members that clearly, you know, are fans of Elvis and don't really like seeing him portrayed in a certain way. And I, I think that's going to be the big testing gun is like, is this a hate piece for Elvis? And is the audience going to respond to that? A lot of boomers did come out to see the Elvis movie, right? So are they going to come out to see this one too? That's the question. Personally, just my interpretation of the piece, this is not a hate piece about Elvis. This isn't glorifying Elvis either. This is a piece that shows you there was a lot of emotional depth going on in him and he didn't know how to express that properly. If anything, you're watching this man who was pretty much gifted like the golden ticket to do whatever he wanted and couldn't really find a way to verbalize everything he wanted to say. And it's not his story. This is the story of Priscilla Presley. And because of that, we have to talk about Kylie Spenny, who is so good in this movie. I know she won Best Actress at the Venice Film Festival. It's deserved. Like, I was just blown away by the transformation of her in every single time period. She is a good, like, couple inches shorter than, like, the entire cast, even, like, people that are contemporaries to her own age, which really gives you this feeling that, oh, she's young, young when we first meet her. She's playing 14, and she looks 14, and it's kind of weird when you have to see her say these things that a 14 year old would say in this situation it's played off so authentically but as we travel through the decade she really gains agency she really gains footing she can play the range so well and just it's all in the quiet moments where it's the things that aren't said the things she has to do in her solitude where this is like a prison for her that she can't escape from and the only time she really feels like there's any anything happening is when Elvis is around her because that's the truth. The other times it's there's two moments going on for her at once. When Elvis is gone, she's trapped in this home, forced to go to school in this place where she can't speak to anybody or do anything for herself. She can't leave. She can't get a job. She is just essentially just like a prop. And the other time is here's Elvis controlling her, taking her on these things, giving her different pills, giving her different drinks, just being like, well, baby, you got to do this. You got to do that for me. Those kind of things. It's very scary. And it, it really effectively portrays that she is younger than him. He was this towering presence. And there was something about him that is electric that you're gravitating towards. She plays it so well. Kylie is so good in this movie. Very emotionally controlled. Very powerfully portraying like the silence and the fear and the frustration and the love. She plays young well. I know she's not like an old actor in her 30s. She's still, I think, like 25, 26. And you feel like this is the kind of role that a young actress can really sink into and portray those. I'm sure she's had experiences like this in her own life that you can take from because it's... I feel so stupid talking about this because I am a man, but I'm sure it's a universal experience for a lot of women that there is just this sense of like, well, he loves me so I can excuse some of those things and accept where I'm supposed to be with him. The most uncomfortable I get in this movie, just from my perspective, is just watching her, watching Priscilla be like a good foot shorter than Elvis and she's hanging out with him and like six of his guys, just like being the young teenager when you have this older guy and all his friends drinking and smoking and laughing and you're just there like I don't know what I'm here for just arm candy I was very uncomfortable and like oh I'm not I'm not vibing with that it's very scary but it's because Kylie portrays that so well she really captures that feeling really makes that intensity visceral and scary and it's great and the Sofia Coppola of it all, look, it's the quiet moments. She doesn't want this to be loud. There's some moments it does get loud. And there's a few visual cues that she does where it's genuinely like, oh, this is not really your style. It's a little more showy than what we're seeing. Some stuff with Elvis. But there's also just a lot of like, here's like a dissolve. Here's like a dissolve. 
it was a fade to black. And I know there was some reports that Sophia struggled to get funding for this movie. And they're like, we just need a little bit of money for additional shooting. And I'm wondering if like just the quiet nature of it all, where it's not these outlandish sets we're kind of filming in small locations. There's clearly like a grounds we're doing most of this on. The rooms aren't big. I wonder if that's because we couldn't get larger than what we had here. It's hard to say. But I, I think like the empty space of the entire piece really helps you build like the solitude that Priscilla had to go through. And that's really interesting. And I'm, I'm very captivated by that. Sophia was a good choice for this story. I, I think there's like the Marie Antoinette thing that you could play with where suddenly this child has to be upheld to a different standard, but they're still a child. They still have a certain mindset. There's something to explore there. And she does it well. Now, Kylie was phenomenal. One of the best performances all year, just blowing everyone out of the water on screen. We do have to talk about Jacob Elordi as Elvis Presley. He is the second lead to this. And he's one of those actors that you can just see. He's going to be the next guy. I, I'm not going to say it, but I could see Elordi taking Timothy Chalamet as this generation's like character guy doing stuff like this. His Elvis is so much different than Butler's, where Butler was going for the big, bombastic, I, everything matters to me, everything's happening to me. This is an Elvis who kind of like trails off for a bit, tries to think about certain things, and it's definitely more perspective like this is how Priscilla would remember him. This guy that, you know, it's all this energy, all this energy, but when they're together, he's kind of quiet and trying to think of like something more, because maybe he wants to do more, but he can't do more. Alordi portrays it so good. Like, this kid gets it. He is very timid and scary. When he has his outbursts, it's all believable. He's not, like, bending over backwards to get the accent perfect. It's just a natural dialect that comes out of him. It's a very strong performance. One that carries the picture in the other direction, where you're seeing the timid mouse that is Kylie and the overarching, like, like huge figure that is a Lordy. And when they come together, there's genuine connection, genuine feeling, but also he's kind of scary and you're scared of him because he's a huge freak. Making a Lordy Elvis is a great choice because he's a tall fucker. He's a big boy. So he towers over her and it's very scary. And those sequences where like somebody's head is out of frame and you just see Priscilla looking up, it is so powerful. It's a really good, it's a really good movie. It's well made, well directed. The actual like flow we're going for works really well. The get in, get out nature of it's like, we don't need the history of Elvis. You know it. They meet at the army. This is where she leaves him. You get it. That's it. You know, we don't have to dwell on anything. We don't need the reactions of what's happening. You know what's happening to this girl. She gets trapped in this thing, thinks she wants it. She gets out and can hopefully find herself again. And I believe she does. Kylie and Elordi, they're great. Sofia Coppola does some really fine work here. It is quiet, but it has an electric score, an electric soundtrack with songs that are not from Elvis, which is kind of cool, and songs that make you go, oh yeah, I guess if we really think about this song, it's kind of weird. This is the generation, the modern generation, my generation is the generation that goes, if you think about this, it's kind of messed up. And Sofia Coppola gets that. She's the director to make that movie. Baz Luhrmann wants to celebrate Elvis. Sophia Coppola wants to show you. He kind of groomed this teenager and it's really weird, but she eventually was able to get out of this thing because he fell apart and she didn't need to take care of him. And that's kind of cool. Is it the best Sophia Coppola? I don't think so. But it's a really good place. If, if you are a young person who hasn't delved into her work, if you've been kind of just like, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Elvis movie. I kind of want to see like these more intimate approaches to these stories. It's a great place to start. And then when you see something like Priscilla, you can jump into the virgin suicides to Marie Antoinette to the bling ring and those kind of things and get exactly the vibe that this has that's in comparison to those other pieces. It's a Sofia Coppola pick. It feels like it. And that's great. It's a solid movie. It's going to make you think about stuff. And maybe an older generation doesn't want to think about those things, but they're conversations to have and we should have them. So Priscilla... I am going to give an 8 out of 10.
Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.